<laughs> um, look, it's not, it's not for me to advise Mr Farage about his career options. No, I'm not asking you to advise him. I'm asking you whether you take advantage of his offer. I think that's it's what, free. I, th <laughs> I think that's probably unlikely. My advice to Mr Farage would be he might want to concentrate his efforts on the constituents in Clacton that elected him into office as opposed to spending his time in the United States of America. Well, you, you know, uh, OK, I, I'm laughing about it, but there is a serious point here. Uh, your leader has said time and time again, I remember it from his conference speech, we will always put country before party. Mm -hmm. Man comes along, it might be a different party, and he says, I can help you. And it's manifest he can help you. He is close to Trump. Trump listens to him because Trump tells the world that he listens to Nigel Farage. Why would you snub the offer of help? <laughs> That's a help for the country unless you're putting now your party's interests and dislike of Mr Farage before the country's interests. Well, I'm sure Mr Farage would be pleased you're making the case for him. I mean, look, the counterfactual here is that we do not have influence and we do not have relationships. That's just not true. Karen Pierce, our ambassador in the United States, the team, the foreign secretary, people that work in government here in Westminster have, ha have got relationships with President-elect Trump, Vice President-elect. Yeah, but none, of them, the none of them gets invited to Mar-a-Lago. None of them gets photographed in Trump Tower. Why don't you use this man who's offering you help? As I say, I think he should focus on working with his constituents oh. in Clacton who deserve a bit of a full-time MP as opposed to oh. All right. transatlantic commentator. Oh.